Uh, that's kind of what I expect to hear for majority of this project. We got Death Grips Bottomless Pit today, and I am, I'm, I'm, I'm scared. A little bit more anxiety going on, because I don't know what I'm going to get. I'm hoping that this is great. I'm hoping that it carries a lot of the elements that the previous Death Grips albums that I've listened to have. Um, I know the severe amount of love for this group, but if I don't like something, I'm going to tell you I don't like it. If I do like it or, or, or I feel like I can understand why I like it, then I'll explain it. I'm already sweating. We'll see how much of what MC Rye we can actually understand without having to go back to the lyrics on this one. But let's give it a try. Bottomless Pit. Death, uh, real, de de death Grips. Bottomless Pit. How bottomless is this pit? We shall find out right now. Let's go. God, I'm not ready. I don't have anything set up. Jeez. Ah! Oh, why am I doing this? Some of you think this is for shock value or to make the video funny. It's really not. I legit just got scared. Track number one, giving bad people good ideas. That is an interesting track name. Ty keep giving bad people good ideas. I keep giving bad people good ideas. And it begins! So what he said was like really impactful, the delivery was strong, it was really deep in this- I didn't understand a word he fucking said just now. Someone's going crazy on that electric guitar, man. That amplifier, you can hear the amps almost. It's like, that's the kind of guitar work I like to see or hear. So first track, definitely going back to read the lyrics. Uh, based off the sound of the track itself and going based off the theme of the album most likely, Bottomless Pit is an appropriate name for the problem, for the, Bottomless Pit is an appropriate name for the project most likely because we're carrying that theme right now. I mean, it sounds like somebody's falling down a bottomless pit with the intro track. I don't know, when it comes to Death Grips, what I've been doing lately when listening to them is imagining their soundtracks being played in the background of movies that I know really well. Like, it was a long time ago, I think I watched a movie where there was, a, there was this kid and he fell down a pit. And as he's falling down the pit, there's like this really suspenseful music. I could picture that music playing right now. Like, maybe he kept running, he kept going too far. Oh shit, I fell all the way down this cliff. And then you die. First track, not bad. Track number two, Hothead. No, no, no. Death Grips fans, you're not exempt from this. Explain what he's doing. He is legit going into the mic and saying... That is what he just did. see is a guy on a motorcycle going really really fast speaking gibberish as the wind is blowing in his face maybe he's running from somebody maybe he's running from something or maybe he's trying to do something preemptively I mean that's what hotheads do like I said with death grips all I found is that it's really easy to follow the concepts of their music based off how it sounds track number three spikes Golly, man, like this is this is this is something. I don't know how much more experimental and industrial their sound can get. Like, this is what they make. And you can tell it's quality. Now, I listen to Death Grips for, you know, the, their unique 
kind of style. I don't listen to Death Grips necessarily to give me a feeling. So uh, leave in the comments below what it is that you know Death Grips does for you. Because for me, I'm listening for more so concept. I'm listening more so for uh, a purpose, like as far as you know where I can place it in my mind that it would make sense. The the bass for me adds this nice sense of suspense, and it's already industrial. It's already experimental. And it does carry a hip hop vibe with the addition of MC Ride, so I like it for that reason alone, if nothing else. Strike number four, warping. This is a very straightforward track and and I like it more so because of how many different elements tend to hit the song at one point You got a nice hook in there that kind of explains the purpose of the song and it is warping the entire time The entire track is warping and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming I believe that was right that was on the hook most likely I'm assuming he sounded a little bit different or a little bit distorted But that also kind of ties into the theme of him being warped or maybe he's a warped individual your mind is warped your body is warped You're warped the song is warped taking advantage of the bass again and, and using this to kind of further Intensify the point of the song is what I like so perfect song on here for me. I like it first track on here That is my perfection track track number five eh? <laughs> Sounds like someone out here in Tokyo. I'm not really gonna comment on you know people saying that MC Ride is like the best rapper because stop it. What I do like is how easily he carries the point of the song. Like he he makes it so much easier to understand than I feel any other artist would. And I feel like there are multiple interpretations for this song. I mean, you got on the one hand him saying who you think you are, A, as if he's talking to somebody else. But on this, it's almost like he's talking to himself. Like, who you think you are. He references hearing his own voice. He references his own reflection. He's fighting with himself, almost. Like, he's still crazy in the sense that, like, you remember the Money Store when the whole theme of the album was this guy who was just really uh, paranoid. And then we got on ex-military which i don't remember i believe ex-military was before he's talking about being a crazy man the entire time so it's like on this project it's like the theme is being carried over or it's almost as if he's not fully letting go or, or the paranoia hasn't fully left him like he's still having arguments and battles and in fights within himself uh it reminds me of other music out there to be honest i'm not really attracted to the fact that it sounds like like a pop like a synth pop kind of song or like a record that i would hear on that kind of style of music or the track is trying to express the fact that he's really not you know motivated about anything he's not really impressed with whatever or whoever is in front of him right now next track bubbles buried in this jungle oh, no. <laughs> What do I need to explain about this track? It literally is the title of it. Bubbles buried in this jungle. It sounds like there is this track playing underground and up above ground there's just a jungle. Everything, whatever you can imagine that would be in a jungle, this is what the track would be. At one point, it's almost like the track gets muffled, almost as if it's smothered. And the track itself, the way the bass hits or the way the instruments hit is kind of bubbly. It's kind of pop, 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 pop. It, it does it, the whole track. And again, I'm assuming he's referencing the jungle maybe to kind of put this picture in his mind. Like, oh, you know, there's a jungle in my head and... You know, there's a jungle around me, or I'm just in this jungle, and he's still paranoid, kinda. Next track, Trash. 
Please don't be trash. Already like it now because he just mentioned in reference the money store. What if this whole thing is just a conspiracy, right? What if Rai just said the liquor store, right? And in the in 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 they're both in their in what is considered to be one of their better projects, the money store. What if he's trying to say the money store is really the liquor store? It's just the place where I spend all my money, and because I drink so much and I'm under the influence, these are my thoughts. He's still following the theme of the last project. It's still here. It's still there. It's really not that much explaining that I need to do. They make it so much easier because he just painted the picture and said these ebony skies. So. Pretty much the entire world is dark to him. There's nothing of importance, nothing of value. He doesn't see any real value in the world around him. Next track, Houdini. Where am I? I'm gone? Oh, that's, that's crazy. Here I am! I had to make a Houdini joke. What do you want me to do? This, this asshole be a. <laughs> Next track, BB Poison. Are you liking? I'm being attacked. One of the things that I really like about this track is the fact that they make the 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 drop so impactful by like the lyrics rising after a certain point. He said he sneaks up on me, like he sneaks up on himself. He's still paranoid. Bro, it's okay. Next track, three bedrooms and a good name. I can only imagine what this track is about. Man, see, like, this is where, like I said, sometimes you have to chastise Death Grips for using the scream as a gimmick. Other times you have to congratulate them for, you know, I mean, you can understand what he's saying, but other times you need to congratulate him because even though it's, you have to pay attention more to what it is that he's saying, it's almost like three bedrooms in a good neighborhood is like the story of the classic average lifestyle, the average family, and it's like, Ride is not a, an artist that I would ever see in that situation. He's not an artist that I could ever see in that position uh, because as he's following this trend throughout his music it is that he's paranoid, that he's crazy in a way. So this is a very safe environment for him and I don't think he would actually want to be in this like... Uh, there's there's one point that uh, the the hook says side bitches don't matter and he tells himself that you know the the side bitches don't feel which is almost him justifying going to sleep with you know other women like cheating on his wife essentially to go sleep with these other women and then telling himself or convincing himself that uh, they don't feel or they don't matter because you know he only loves his wife but he does what he wants because they they fulfill the urge for the moment I like this track because there's more to grab from it than just its catchiness. The the more you listen to it, I feel like the the deeper the story it goes. Uh, next track, Ring a Bell. <laughs> Yes. This, is the, this is the one! Oh. 
if they had like a guitar cut because that is the best see the only reason i can appreciate the guitar cut is because of the the, the suspenseful music we get in the beginning it's a nice transition from that kind of music that's why i feel like it's necessary you you know how like there's too much of a good thing it's like this track would be lucky charms without any of those little brown pieces of crap and it'd be too sweet it'd be annoying after a certain point you wouldn't want to continue to eat it it's only with those little brown pieces of sh that you're able to enjoy the lucky charms when they come and that's what this track is for me next track 80808 <laughs> Why? Oh my god. This track is like a drug dealing anthem. Like, I wanna sell drugs, not just not in a bad way. Final track on here, bottomless pit. <laughs> So, really like that track as far as its message. Didn't like the sound of it or didn't really care for the sound of it. It starts or, or it ends this album pretty much the same way it begins. On that track specifically, I, I really like the fact that um, they he referenced drugs again as, as to say that I fucked you in half. Like, the drugs are what's messing you up. The drugs are, are what's ruining you. And the entire track is essentially about that. How do I feel about this project, Bottomless Pit? Come on, fire truck. Come on. There you go. Red piece of shit. Oh, there's another one. Nice. Um, Like I said, it, it's hard to kind of describe the things that make this one better in certain aspects than the others. Um, I think there are certain tracks on this project that really carry the theme of the money store or make it uh, seem like it's a sequel album or a sequel project. Since that ride, the entire project is still just as paranoid or speaking metaphorically the same way he was on projects like Ex Military and on the money store. The money store, in my opinion, is what kind of gave them this platform to be paranoid and to be able to get away with it. Uh, from a sound standpoint, I wouldn't necessarily say it's as good or or beats out other projects that are under their name or the, at least the ones that I've heard. I think it definitely does carry that industrialized, very uh, heavy sound that the Money Store did. But in my opinion, with this project, it seems a little bit less, it seems like done to a little bit less of a degree. The tracks are a little bit more catchy. They're a little bit lighter. Um, they're not as dark or as twisted as on the money store. They're not as industrialized They don't stand out as much as the ones on the money store The concept isn't as clear as it was on the money store It seems like you know the money store but with an alternate ending like he's still paranoid but Maybe in this album he decides that he's going to live with the paranoia as opposed to questioning it the entire time or trying to explain why. Um, there's really not that much to discuss uh, unless you want to get deep into their, their their palette sonically or you want to get deep into their instrumentals. I wouldn't necessarily say there's that much to talk about other than their concept. They make really good use of the guitar here. They don't overuse it. They put it just where it needs to be. They, you know, they allow you to miss it. There are elements within a lot of these tracks that they don't overuse so that you're able to appreciate anytime you do hear something new or unique or fun. I like how Riot is a little bit more understandable on this project as opposed to just being intentionally against the grain, intentionally out of the way, intentionally twisted with no real purpose behind it. Pretty much just saying it doesn't feel like a gimmick on this album. He also does a couple references towards his race, how his death is equal to money and I'm, a, I'm assuming that's a reference towards slavery or the one track where he kind of helped me form a conspiracy theory and made me believe that the money store was essentially uh, a store or, or a place where he spent all his money to go and fulfill this desire, this deep-seated uh, resentment towards himself. Maybe he didn't want to face himself because he was so paranoid and always went to this store or this place to spend money to get this uh, this satisfaction that really could never be fulfilled. Either way, it was definitely a good project. I definitely enjoyed it. Sonically, it was great. Death Grips, Bottomless Pit. <laughs> I actually enjoyed this one more than I thought I would. It's been Sean C. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do down in the sections below. Stop driving past my house. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.